What is happening, y'all? Fighting Cowboy here, and welcome on back to the second part of our coverage for the Royal Academy. Now, as a reminder, if you're following along, make sure you keep leveling. Uh, at this point, we should have our Vicar at about 40, so we're going to go ahead and start working on strength and endurance. And at this point, what I like to do is really spend my points based on where I feel I need them. Now, to elaborate real quick, at this point, we've hit the first soft cap of Vigor. We have enough endurance to have a medium roll, and we've met our weapon requirements. So since we've covered all of our main bases, the question is really, what do I need in actual practice? Am I dying too fast? In that case, we're going to take Vigor higher. Am I running out of stamina to dodge or attack? In that case, focus endurance. Am I good with both of those things and I just want to hit harder? In that case, I'm going to focus on strength. And that's how I would suggest you start leveling as you move forward now that we have covered all of our main bases. So we went ahead, got our 40 Vigor, and now we're going to start pumping strength a little bit so we hit harder. Uh, but once you walk on out the gate, right up there is where the boss is going to be. But instead, we're going to be shooting on over here to the right. And the very first thing we're doing is jumping over another ledge and going to go grab another hidden goodie. Now up here is a legendary uh, talisman. This is one of the talismans that you do need for the platinum trophy. Uh, but on top of that, it's actually quite nice for casters. This is going to increase the casting speed of your uh, of your spells. Now keep in mind, this is just for singular casts. It's not going to boost up uh, charged casts. It's also not going to work on everything. Something like the dragon breaths, for example, they're not going to be impacted by this. And additionally, once you get towards late game, if you have a lot of points in dexterity, you're actually not even going to need this because your casting speed does increase with dexterity as well. But until that point, the Radigan icon can help quite a bit. So there we go. And that is why you don't try to block a giant sword with a little shield. those two. I'm going to jump over this and kill some more. You don't need to kill everything in instances like this. A lot of it is just out of habit. Now, the first thing I really want to do is we're going to get access up towards where the boss is and actually unlock a shortcut that'll make things a little bit easier uh, to go over there. But if I get past this tree, uh, there's, there's a couple things in this lower portion, this courtyard down here, that we're going to knock out before we make our way on up. So you can see kind of this overhang. Let's go ahead and run on over there. I'm just going to stick to the walls because there is another one of those uh, Iron Maidens that kidnapped us roaming around in this area. We don't want to deal with that. that oh god it actually found us well thankfully it's kind of slow so we're just going to keep running we're going to grab this seed over here i'm going to go ahead and heal up uh, around this corner gotta stay fast that that thing usually doesn't pay attention to us uh, now there's a crab that's going to pop up right here so once you start seeing it we're going to begin charging a heavy attack and then hit another one I'll we'll give him a stomp. There we go. Crap's gone. And we'll get the golden runes. Since that thing already aggroed us anyway, we'll just run on over here and grab that. And we're going to make our way across. So these enemies you can just ignore for now. Uh, what we are running for is this buttress right here. You can just drop on down onto it. Now, when you hop up, there's going to be a large boulder that starts rolling down. So just be ready for that. So here comes the boulder. And what we're going to do is just hop over the ledge. Grab the crystal darts. We're going to wait right here. 
Now when the next boulder passes, that's when we're going to jump up and run for it. We're not going to worry about any of the loot here. We'll get that a little bit later. For now, just go ahead and wait. And okay, you're able to squeeze past. That's good. Next up, we have Moongrum. Now, at this point, you probably haven't fought a lot of NPCs. Uh, NPCs can parry you, so you can parry him yourself. But he, in particular, is... is uh, He likes to parry. So one thing I want to point out is that if you're following along with us and using the Zweihander, a Colossal Sword, while it's being two-handed, as in holding down our top button, wire triangle, and pressing our one, it is unparryable. So if you're fighting Moongrum... This is a very safe way to do so, because he's not going to be able to actually get a parry off. If you're fighting him one-handing the sword, he will try and parry very frequently. And uh, parrying can, can definitely hurt. He also has some spell casts. He'll pull out his, his staff and try to get spell casts. Uh, he has one heal, so you can see he's spamming that sword. I'm going to go ahead and pop myself off. Tried to block with that. I don't know what he was thinking. There we go. And with that, we get the Carrion Knight Shield, which is actually a very, very nice medium shield. 100% physical negation, and the big thing you'll see here is that it has 71 magic negation. Of course, this does require 15 in intelligence, but there's actually a lot of weapons that are strength in that are really good. So if you're following along with this particular build, it might not be a bad idea to hit that 15 and threshold for this shield because later on we're going to find some weapons that are extremely solid that we can take advantage of. With Moongrum done, uh, this will take us on up to the boss, but there's no grace up there, so we're not going to worry about that just yet. Instead, we're going to remove those boulders from the equation. So around the corner, go ahead and take that out. Go ahead and grab this. Up over the sledge. Make sure to stick to the left. As you can see, it's only the left side that has that part. We can go ahead and knock open this door. Uh, this is just before Moongroom, so it's just kind of a shortcut. Very quick one. Uh, over there, we're going to come down where that thing's at in just a moment as well. What we're going to do is make our way on up, though. And there's some enemies up here that if we take them out, that ball will stop spawning, which will make... A subsequent runs back to the boss much easier. Go ahead and backstab this enemy. And what I would suggest doing is using some type of throwing weapon to hit this guy. The other one shouldn't aggro, as you can see. And we're just going to lure the pumpkin head over. So we want to fight him before we get involved with all of the other enemies. Actually, you know what? I didn't mention it earlier. I'll talk about it when we get back to a race, though, about uh, leveling and our talismans. So let's go ahead and kill these enemies now. They're going to group up. I can kill them both. One single swing. There we go. With them down, we don't need to worry about that ball anymore, and we can easily grab the loot down below. So from here, go ahead and hop over the ledge. Drop on down. Grab the golden rune and drop on down. And now this is a teleporter. We've seen these before. This is going to take us all the way over here. So we're not going to use that. I mean, unless you want to, you certainly can. But uh, we should have gone to that area previously. So there's no reason to head there for now. Uh, but instead, we're going to continue along where we made that left. And we're going to run down this path now. And you can come this way from the, the other side. Uh, you just can't get up into here. This is a one-way door. So we're just opening up a shortcut. And we can come up behind these enemies. Make it a little bit easier to approach. Now what you're going to want to do is hop over this ledge. And there's going to be an enemy that's just below. Go ahead and get this door open. And we now have the shortcut to the rooftops, which we're going to cover in just a second. So there's an enemy up there. That's the route to the rooftops. Just ignore him for now. Instead, we're going to go this way and around the corner. Go up. And 
Uh, usually these enemies are down here. It looks like they were trying to investigate the fight that happened up above. So we could have just ignored them, but um, these enemies have the Noble Slender Sword, which is quite a rare drop, and if it does drop, it's nice. So I don't mind going out of my way to kill them. But in here, we pick up a very important item, the Glintstone Wet Blade. And similar to how the Wet Blade Stormvale Castle allowed us to uh, make our weapon either refined, heavy, or sharp, this is going to allow us to add both magic and cold scaling into our weapon, which is quite nice. Uh, now, if you have enough healing, feel free to continue on from this point. Otherwise, I would suggest just hopping over to the debate parlor and then running back out and continuing with what we're about to do. Because next up, we're going to head on up into the rooftops. Uh, we have all the shortcuts unlocked, uh, but the rooftops are they are kind of hidden. And that's where we're going to head right now. So... You know what, just for the sake of uh, making things easy, let's actually, we're going to go to the debate parlor, and I'll show you exactly how to run with the new shortcuts we unlocked. I think that's a safe play. Uh, which we can also briefly talk about, um, we talked about leveling earlier, but one thing I didn't address is the Scar Seal. Now keep in mind, we're getting a lot of stats from this. If we were to take this off, you can see uh, numbers are going to go down. But also keep in mind that our resistances are going to go up. So I can see right now, if I take that off, losing that extra endurance will put me into a heavy load. So what might make sense for me at this point in the game is removing this, focusing on my stamina enough to, to hit that threshold, get that back up to where I'm at a medium load again, and then begin focusing my other stats. Because my, the more we get into the game, the later we get, the more valuable that damage negation is gonna be. Uh, and these stats are, you know, losing or gaining stats but losing defense isn't going to be as valuable as we move towards the late game but anyway from the grace we're just going to continue on out uh, now there's no real key items that are, are out on the rooftops but they are pretty long and there's quite a bit of depth to them so i do want to kind of do a run through uh, and show how i would go about tackling them now you can either take that lower path or you can run this way running this way you of course have to deal with those two casters and the one that's behind us. Go ahead and top off. When you jump over this ledge, now the rooftops begin. And this is arguably one of the longest parts of the academy, just because there's so much here. Uh, there's, there's, and the other thing is, there's not really a lot of other ways to get over here. You need to take the path that we just took. So, if you take one path around the rooftops and then see some loot on another part that you want to go for, you're going to need to go back to the grace and take this path again. Grab that golden rune. And we're going to be pointing out the various rooftop paths that you can take. You can see there's some enemies up above here. You can go ahead and use a ranged weapon if you want to get their attention. They're not a, a massive threat. I would focus on this guy first. Looks like he ran off the jumped off the cliff accidentally. And this is one of the first splits we're going to encounter. So from here, we can either drop on down and then we can head towards that enemy. And from there, there's gonna be a ladder that we can take on up and continue. Alternatively, you can actually jump over to this roof. And then from that roof, there is a path you can take to the left that's going to have some loots. Or you can go over to the right and that's going to take you into the same area but a alternate path that'll take you through some loots. So those are two other paths you can take by uh, continuing the loop on the rooftops. We're just gonna take this one lower path as it's going to bring us to a portion, an upper portion of the academy that you can't get to otherwise. Uh, but I just wanted to point out those alternative paths there. So once this enemy is below us, we're gonna jump and completely miss our diving attack. Very disappointing there. 
Just be very cautious with your rolls while we're out here on the rooftops. It's very easy to get uh, to kind of panic roll and you will die if you fall into one of those abysses right there. Um, so stuff over there we're not going to worry about. Instead, you can see a ledge right here. Go ahead and drop on down. I love that I'm just literally filled with arrows at the moment. Around the corner. You can see some goodies over there that we can get to. We're going to talk about the imbued sword key in a little bit. Get to the uh, end of this part and then we'll discuss the imbued sword key and the implications to it. So we can actually, we're not going to take that down. Uh, if you take this down, you can then go all the way down to the bottom, kind of where you see the messages and the lantern down there. We are instead going to go this way. And there's some enemies up here. Want to kill quickly so they don't pile up on you. You can see a piece of loot over there. This part is a little bit tricky. You can see that shiny right there on that chandelier. So you want to line yourself up and then slowly walk off. I'll get you the Academy Glenstone key. And then from there, roll on down. him out and hit this a lot of stuff down here but now that we have that ladder if we were to die we we're right here at the church of the cuckoo so this is the initial entrance to the academy and this is just an upper portion to it that we had to take that rooftop path to reach This enemy can be uh, pretty aggressive. I'd suggest just kind of rushing and doing as much damage as you can. He has explosive crossbow bolts, and that will, it'll absolutely just shred your health if he's given the opportunity. So you want to be very fast on this enemy. Don't really give him time to think. And on over there, we get the Azure's Glintstone Staff. Um, but that is actually going to wrap up our little adventure of the rooftops. So from here, we're going to head back on over to the debate parlor. And at this point, we are ready to make our way on up to Renala, the boss of this zone. And before that, let's just talk about some of the stuff we just gathered. Uh, so over here, we have the Azure Glintstone Staff. This, similar to the Radigan Icon, is going to reduce the cast time of sorceries, but it's going to consume additional FP. Uh, personally, I'm not a giant fan of it. I think it has pretty strict requirements at 52 intelligence, uh, but regardless, there it is. Uh, we also picked up a spell, of course, which is nice. But the big thing I want to talk about is the imbued sword key. Now, there are three imbued sword keys in the game, and they are used over here. One, two, three. Uh, these are three separate belfry towers, and they're going to be uh, kind of small standalone encounters. One of them is going to give us a early ticket to a portion of Furumazula. One of them is going to take us to the underground zone. And one of them is actually going to take us over to... Right here. Uh, which this is the cathedral where the game started. So if you want, you can go on back and you can fight that thing uh, at the very start. Go ahead, get your revenge, kill it. In addition to that, if you are doing the quest from the Rose Church, which is right here, talking about finding the Blood of the Maiden, you can also get the Blood of the Maiden through doing the Imbued Sword Key. Uh, and that is from using this one, where the three marker is. So all three of these need Imbued Keys to work. Uh, this one over here is going to be the one that will take you back to that enemy so that you can go ahead and fight him. Um, but otherwise, that is going to wrap things up for our coverage on the Royal Academy. So in the next part, we're going to be making our way on over to Renala uh, very fast just to show because we've obviously, uh, at this point, we've disabled the boulders. So there's two different ways. Uh, you can either run on up that way and take that shortcut, 
Or you can jump on the buttress and run on up to where we fought Moongrum, because he's gone and there's no more boulders. Either way, we'll catch you in the next part as we make our way towards Renala.